How you doing, YouTube? Matt, Massive Beer Reviews. Back to get another review. <sighs> stock Ale. I love me some Stock Ales. Old Stock Ales. And this is Stock Ale from Pan B Brewing. Um, yeah, Plan B. I've had a couple of their beers. I've reviewed a couple of their beers. Probably toss a bunch of their beers up at the same time as this one because I actually visited the brewery um, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, I went on the trip to Rhinebeck, New York. I popped into a couple different breweries on my way back. Um, it's not too far out of the way here, so I decided to s slip in there and kind of stop by with the uh, wifey. I assumed she would dig the place, and she did. It's quite nice. Uh, I've always wanted to visit. And uh, it's quite quite nice little quaint little kind of um, farm brewery. The tap room was awesome. The plot it was on. It's like literally down a dirt road and a dead end road and the whole nine. And uh, the beers they had on draft there were fantastic. This was one of them. I mean, listen, I am a sucker for an old stock ales slash English old ales slash barley wines. They can kind of weave and, and merge in and out of each other, depending on what kind of uh, discipline, I guess you would say, uh, they're brewed in. This one's a little bit lower ABV than the stock gales that I usually go gaga over, 8.7% alcohol by volume. But it's a New York uh, wild ale. It's all New York produced beer, and it's aged in bourbon barrels. Uh, brewed and bottled by Plan B Farm Brewery, Poughkeepsie, New York. I wouldn't really call them Kipsy. I actually look like they're quite a bit south there, but that's just me. And done and done. Um, yeah, awesome label. It's just a B on a nice kind of parchment paper style kind of label with a soft wax top, which I don't think does much. It's the only thing about these bottles that I get from Plan B that, I, you know, it looks cool, but I don't think that actually protects the beer from oxidation that much because I don't think the wax completely covers it, though. There's a little pomp to the beer, but we're okay with that. It's easy to get off, though. I'll tell you that much. Zero hiss whatsoever. So this could definitely be a still beer. Um, I mean, they do all, like I said, all kind of. Um, I want to. I don't want to say mixed culture, but you know, wild fermentation kind of their own beers up there. So with zero hiss on there, coming out of a bourbon barrel, you're not getting much of a head on that thing whatsoever. You're left with a rich kind of iced tea looking color beer. Very stock ale in color, too. So she looks the color part of a stock ale, but not much as far as carbonation. We'll see if that matters. Let's get a nose. There's a huge, rich, fat, buttery, honey, smoke component to it. By that, I mean there's a rich smokiness to it. It's almost like you took a smoked malt and an apple cider, mixed them together, and added a dollop of honey to it. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting from the beer. Very vibrant very aggressive there's a soft liquor like evaporative kind of spirit vibe to it i wouldn't really go bourbon on it um but i assume they're sourcing their bourbon barrels from new york and if that's the if that's the case then it could be a kind of more of an immature kind of bourbon you know when you think about bourbon you don't really think about new york state yeah it, it, it's it's sour it's funky. It doesn't get over the top acidic. There's like that, like I said, that kind of rich, kind of slightly smoked, but not smoked. It's going to sound kind of maybe disgusting to some people, but I don't get off put by it. When you're talking about smoke, usually kind of leaning in that kind of rush beard, kind of rich, dense, kind of beef jerky kind of smokiness. This is more of kind of your bologna kind of smokiness so it kind of smells baloney like not in a bad way and then i get that kind of i always get this nose and this taste it definitely comes through in the nose and more so in the taste when you're dealing with honey in a beer it comes off like fatty almost like buttery like and flabby not in that kind of negative off flavor kind of dms -y kind of thing but yeah it smells interesting. It smells nice, it, but also I could see this going in a couple different directions. Like I said, I did drink this on draft, but it actually looks quite a bit different. It smells different from what, what I remember, but we're going to find out. Cheers. Yeah. Markedly different beer than what I had on draft. 
there's an apple cider vinegar component. That's kind of where this one's lands as far as texture, taste, and um, just overall vibe. It's not as aggressive, but it's definitely there. Zero carbonation whatsoever. Not getting much as far as a bourbon. Not getting much as far as a barrel. Maybe a little bit of soft vanilla. But there is a drying component to it. So sure, that could be a ton of oak being thrown at me. But it's, since it's so tart. And getting that kind of apple cider vinegar component. Kind of level of tartness, I guess you'd say. The dryness is... It could be puckering and, and palate smacking without having that oakiness there. So I'm getting that portion of the show. It's thin. It's lightly carbon. No, not lightly. Missing all carbonation. I'm not getting that honey flabby thing I was talking about it on the nose. So I don't think there's actually any honey in it. Yeah, it actually kind of just comes off as like a little bit like almost a still beer. Like it was never carbonated to begin with. Or it was capped and it was capped badly and it just kind of leaked and lost all, all carbonation on it. You know, cap looks pretty all right. But yeah, it's kind of tastes like what I get from a barrel without carbonation in any way whatsoever. Now, they don't talk about recarbonation outside of the barrel. It looks like it. It's got a kind of a yeast cake in the kind of scene down here. So I'm assuming it was recarbed in the bottle. But yeah, it tastes like a still beer. Um, it has a nice kind of base to it, but it's just missing. You need that carbonation in there. I think you need a little bit of the carbonation in there, especially in this kind of beer, to kind of bring it home and kind of flush out a lot of those flavors and kind of take it to the level where, I guess for lack of a better word, where I want it to be, where I think a lot of people would want it to be. Hmm. Just curious, you can see that wax kind of creeping up under the bottle cap. To me, that makes me think maybe it wasn't sealed properly. Because you can see how high that wax gets. You know, it's literally almost creeping over the crown part of the bottle. So it makes me think maybe it wasn't sealed properly and then just waxed. And like I said, this wax isn't really conducive to uh, to actually sealing the beer in there. And there's a couple of them like that. So maybe it's just a capping issue. But so I remember having this on draft. And I remember it being a bit fuller mouthfeel-wise. And having it a little bit more kind of... Whereas this goes in that super acidic... Not sorry. I shouldn't say super acidic. Kind of getting in the apple cidery vibe of things. Remember the one that I had on draft had a little bit more savoriness to it, a little bit more robustness to it. I remember the barrel coming off a little bit more, the bourbon coming off a little bit more. So this one just tastes like a shadow of what I had on draft. Yeah, just, it, it, it's not, I could see some people digging this beer, but for me, it just doesn't land. It's kind of a bummer, to be perfectly honest with you, because I actually dig what Plan B does, and this is probably one of the ones that's kind of a miss for me. Now, you're talking about kind of, uh, you know, all, what's the one I want to look, use for a brewery like this? A kind of, I don't want to use the word rustic because I don't want to be a hipster, but one of the kind of homemade, rustic, artisanal, all those words, kind of DIY, I don't want to trivialize and, and, and kind of, I don't know what the word is. When you're talking about breweries are doing everything on their own, ingredients, bottling, brewing, the whole night, everything's kind of on site. I expect, I don't, again, I'm seeing this a lot in this review, but I don't want to use that word. I tend to find more variance and consistency, but I also think that's kind of part and parcel uh, with the kind of brewery and beer uh, that does such things like Plan B, so... I would imagine if I had four bottles of this, all four might be different going forward. And, I, you know, I think that's kind of what you expect when you deal with breweries like that. So I'm not trying to make excuses for the beer not hitting the marks for me, but also try to understand that I kind of 
you're not getting that peeved over it or disappointed over it because I kind of assume that happens with breweries that kind of do their own thing and or their own entity, their own ingredient kind of thing. So I've talked way much, way too much, way much words, way too much. Let's cut to the chase. Is it one of the better wild beers I've had as of late? No. Uh, the lack of carbonation, I feel like it's kind of sat open and it's kind of got oxidized a bit. So that kind of kind of ruin it, ruins the beer as far as being something to be kind of championed. Um, but I appreciate the cut. And the one I had on draft was quite nice. So take that for what it's worth. Value and availability. I forget how much I paid for this. 12 bucks maybe. Uh, I bought it at the brewery. I don't know if it's brewery only. And leave you with if you like what we like this. If you like venturing and trying breweries that are trying to do the whole local terroir thing. And try to do it for reals. New York has a lot of kind of farm breweries that kind of. It's going to change because in New York, you have to do a certain percentage of your beers to be a farm brewery, and it's very low right now, like in the 60% ingredient thing. Um, it, it soon is going to be 90%. They do almost virtually 100% of their ingredients. So I feel like breweries that are going to be doing their own thing, literally and figuratively, um, it's definitely worth checking out. Like I said, tap room's fantastic. The beers I had on draft are fucking delicious so definitely worth a stop by if you're up in the poughkeepsie-ish area and if you see a bottle on the shelf don't hesitate to pick it up i know a lot of people that dig their beers so definitely worth picking up when you dive into beers like these and you understand what you're getting into i think you understand where i'm coming from as far as this review lands there you go another review in the books down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out doing the social media stuff beer massive if you want to check me out doing the whole podcasting thing and hopefully you guys enjoyed the review Hopefully enjoying the little plan B jammer right now and hope to see you next time. Cheers.